So yes, yeah, so if you're on the recce the other week, then you will hopefully have met me and Nia or have seen me and Nia. Um, and if you're coming on the one in February, then I will be there. Unfortunately, Nia can't make that one, but um, both of us are ambassadors for the race. I hugely believe in you know everything it, it's doing for women in in ultra running and sport. We we love it because the more we more women we can see on a start line of an ultra, the happier we are. We've been racing for quite a few years um, and it's definitely become more and more over recent years on start lines. And it's great to see. Really good to see. Um, so the She Ultra should be, you know, just a fantastic event. It'll be a great day. We're praying to the weather gods that the weather's nice. Um, but I think it'll be a really good challenge for everyone, from those that have run an ultra before to others who have never even dared attempt these sorts of things it's a phenomenal challenge that everyone will be everyone can complete it's just approaching it in the right manner and one of the most important things elements of that is your nutrition so what we wanted to do was just bring as many of sort of you guys on as possible to just run through um the nutrition side of endurance running because the truth is you can be as fit as you like. You can do all the training in the world. But if you don't get your nutrition right, that can be an absolute end of your game anyway. You know, the best runners in the world, they do all the training. They are super fit. You see them on the TV, but they can get the nutrition wrong as well. And believe me, they do. Some of the best runners in the world get their nutrition wrong in these races and it ends their race. So it's a really important aspect. Um, and with the race less than... It's less than 12 weeks now, the event. So it's now time to be starting to think about your nutrition because I'm sure, well, hopefully now you're starting to do those longer walks, longer runs that are taking you over that two, three hour mark. And you should really be thinking about the nutrition side of it and how you're going to fuel the before, during and after these training sessions. So Nia and I are going to take you just, to, we're just going to keep it simple there's no, we're not going into the depths of it. Um, we don't want to get into the science and the nitty gritty of it all. You know, you can you can go online and find out all you need to know about nutrition if you want, or you can contact a nutritionist. Nia and I are not nutritionists. We do have Susanna on with us, who if you have got any questions, she in the Q and A bit will hopefully be able to answer that for you. Um, but we are more keeping it simple from a racing perspective. Um, and just looking at nutrition as a whole and why it is so important for you for in this ultra event. Uh, and we're just going to try and keep it quite simple because I appreciate some of you probably know a lot and some of you might not know a lot. So if we just keep it nice and simple for this um, for this webinar, if there's any questions at, at the end, what we're going to say is there's a chat feature on Zoom. So if you've got any questions, please pop them in that chat feature as we go along. And then when we get to the end, we'll run through those questions and answer them the best we can. Uh, rather than jumping in with questions on the way through, we'll just do them all at the end. Uh, so I think we're gonna, if we jump straight in and then we can, um, like I said, take any questions right at the end. So put putting nutrition simply is you've got your main food groups. So you've got your carbohydrates, your proteins, your fats, Vit uh, vitamins, minerals, water, and fiber. And in very real amounts, these make up a balanced diet, as I'm sure you all know. But so during an endurance event, such as an ultra, and during training, so during your long training runs, we need to create this balance. However, to create it, we have to vary those elements from your normal daily intake. Um, and then I'm going to hand over to Nia, who's going to talk a bit more about those carbohydrates. OK, so there's lots of different um, parts of the diet. There's fats, there's protein and carbohydrates, and probably the three main energy groups. And you can get energy from all three of those sources. But when we're doing a bit more walking or running or activity, preparing for something big like an ultra, and when we're actually running or walking the whole day for a few hours, um, however long it's going to take us, um, we need a lot more calories than we normally do. And one of the easiest ways to get calories is in carbohydrates. Um, so carbs are really, really important 
for um, anybody who's active. Um, you need more calories when you're active, so you need more carbs to fuel your body. And you can think of carbs a bit like petrol for your car. So you need fuel for your car, and the carbohydrates is like petrol going into your body to fuel your muscles um, so that they can work and function properly. Um, the other thing that carbs also do, um, as well as your muscles, they fuel um, your, your brain, your sort of neurotransmitters. So if we don't get enough carbs, we sometimes can lose concentration, have difficulty um, thinking. We might get muddled with our navigation or um, just get, you know, feel a bit sort of woozy sometimes. Um, so that's why carbs are really important. Um, there are two main types of carbohydrates. Um, you've got your complex carbohydrates, which are like slow release, slow burn carbs, and they take a bit of time to get broken down in your body. Um, I don't know where Zoe's gone. Um, and uh, they're things like um, bread, pasta, a banana, um, rice, um, oats, um, like getting blackjack and that sort of thing, but complex carbohydrates. Um, and then you've also got your simple carbohydrates, which are like um, fast release, instant sugar, instant carbohydrate energy. So all the carbs get broken down to sugar and that's what your body uses. So simple carbohydrates, you need those as well. And when you're out for a whole day running or walking and they're things like um, jelly babies, a gel, um, something sugary, some chocolate, um, those sorts of very sweet things that release sugar really quickly. So fruit would also go into there as like some grapes um, or what else do people use? Um, can't think at the moment, but um, yeah, Harry Bow maybe or Jelly Babies. Um, so when you're running, it's good to think about what type of carbohydrates might work for you. Um, what do you like eating? Um, you're not going to want some to eat something on the race that you don't particularly like eating anyway, because sometimes on the race, your mouth gets a bit dry. You can feel that, you know, your, your tummy can be a bit funny. You so say you want something that's really familiar with yourself for yourself that you've, um, that you like eating and enjoy eating and you've practiced um, during one of your training sessions. Um, and you want to think about what simple carbohydrates you like uh, and can carry with you and uh, might be at the aid stations and what complex carbohydrates there might be too. Um, just thinking now about um, the other things um, being uh, that you have in your diet. You also have um, protein and fats in food. Um, Protein is important because it helps maintain our muscles. Um, it's particularly important if you've done a long run that you take something with protein in to help with, um, muscle repair. Um, I think it's a good idea to have some proteins and fats in your race food as well because it helps with variety. Um, and I think it helps keep your stomach happy. Um, a lot of people sometimes get sort of problems managing to eat later on in the races when they've been out for a few hours or they get problems with nausea and vomiting. Um, but I think just having a good sort of variety of food and include some fat and protein in your race foods um, helps avoid that. Um, I'm not sure if that's a scientific um, fact, but I think it's true, certainly in my experience um, and what I see when I do races and events. Um, so um, Zoe's going to now talk about a little bit about how much we should eat and when um, to give you an idea of how to plan for the training sessions and for the um, actual um, event day itself. Uh, yeah, thanks, Nia. Just sort of on the back of that protein thing as well. Um, you know, it's really, we're talking about here how to fuel the run itself, but it, as Nia just sort of said, it's really important to think about your pre and after fueling. Um, so when, for training, for example, you need to think about your pre and after. So going back to that protein conversation, um, post run, so post your long run, or if you're doing a hard run, if you're going to go run in hills or do some efforts, then basically anything you're doing muscle damage, then that's where you need to take on protein after your run. You ideally want to be taking on proteins within 20 to 30 minutes post run. It's, this is going to help your muscles recover quickly. Now, a lot of people 
the, the fastest way is protein shake. You can, the whey protein, you, most people will have seen them or heard of them. And yes, you might think, isn't that just what bodybuilders use? I don't want to build body mass, uh, muscle mass. That is not what it is. It, it, it is literally what it says. It's a protein shake. But I know, you all know, we're all, people are busy mums running around. You do your workout before you know it. The kids have come in. You're trying to get the kids ready for a, for the next gym class or whatever. And you haven't eaten a single thing after you've just done a hard 60 minute run, which is like the worst thing you can do. You've got to get that food in straight away. And I know kids come first or busy life comes first. So the easiest way to do that is a protein shake. It's super simple. It's normally a scoop of whatever powder. You can add milk to it or water. Personally, I'll add milk to it, shake it up in a bottle. I drink that. I know I'm good that I've had a protein shake and that is recovery right there. I don't need to stress as much about getting that food in. I can have it in 20 minutes time or half an hour once the kids have eaten or whatever. So that's a that's a big thing I would say is potentially is to look at a protein shake, which is an easy way to get your recovery in after long training sessions. So your long run, your long walk or any high intensity ones. Mm. So that's something to, to, to bear in mind. And I'm just then, thinking, sorry, I was just going to add, I think it's important not to be, I think you've got to, to recognize that when you're preparing for something like this, you're going to need more food than you normally would eat. Um, because, you know, I, I don't really look at how many, you know, calories I need per day, but um, I had a look at the other day. And um, yeah, so, so because I do running, I think I need about an extra thousand calories a day um, on top of your normal baseline. And it's quite a lot really when you think about it. And people who are maybe sort of calorie counting, you know, might, you know, that might seem excessive. But I think when you're sort of active and when you're, when you're, you know, doing regular activity, you just need to make sure that you give your body this, you know, the amount of food it needs. It needs a good quantity of food. Um, and it's really important that you give it enough food so that it can sort of do the job that you're asking of it, really. Yeah, and what I will add to that as well, Nia, is that like you were saying, if, if people are, you know, I've come across it a load of times with runners, I'm sure you have, that they are, should we say, calorie counting because they're trying to lose weight, which is, you know, sport is great and it can help you lose weight, but you cannot, um, you can't miss out the eating. Otherwise, you will end up injury, you know, injury prevention, everything. You need to get those nutrients in, in order to be able to train and do what we do. Um, so you do need to take on, it's about taking on the right foods and yes, taking on those extra calories. Certainly don't be doing calorie deficit, trying to suddenly shed a load of weight. It is not the way to do it. It's about healthy eating, but eating the right amount. I just, yeah, we'll just add that in there. Um, okay, so moving on. How much carbs do we need? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Moving on to what I'm going to call a rule of thumb. Um, it is, you know, there is all sorts of science studies out there that will on different athletes. But as a rule of thumb, you want to look to roughly 60 to 70 grams of carbohydrates an hour and about 200 to 250 calories per hour. So you will... <clears throat> Basically, you can't you can't take on enough calories that your body will burn is my point. So the average runner will burn between 600 and 1000 calories per hour whilst running. And if you think about that over the course of an ultra, potentially you're running anything from four hours through to some of these people that are running 30 odd hours plus in an ultra. But your body, your body cannot consume 600 to 1000 calories. It can only you know, it, so you can only put into it what it can take. Therefore, you will be constantly running as a deficit. Um, so it's a bit like back to my analogy of a car um, and the fuel tank. If you think of a car's, car, car's fuel tank, the aim of the game is to keep it full. Hence the reason you keep putting this nutrition in. But the problem is you can't keep it full because you can't actually put enough petrol in to keep it topped up, it will slowly deplete. You'll keep filling it up and it'll just slowly keep depleting. So the idea is to just keep topping it up. And by the end of the race, yes, you're, you're, in theory, your fuel tank will be half empty rather than it being complete, completely depleted. 
Um, so I'm just going to give you an example of what I was saying about that 60 to 70 grams of carbohydrates and about 200 and 250 calories an hour of what your body can take. So an example is a Mars bar. So a Mars bar has about 35 grams of carbohydrates and 230 calories in it. So it's not the 60 to 70 uh, grams of carbs in an hour, but it has got a high calorie content. And what I will say is an ultra is you're moving quite slow. So you're not burning the sugars really fast. So if you go out to a park run, a 5K, you're running really hard. They will burn the sugars really fast. Whereas when you are running an ultra, you can lean on the calories a bit more because it's a mo it is slower burning than it would be if you were running a 5K effort. So something like a Mars bar is probably, you you know, you could get away with a Mars bar an hour. Um so something like that is going to work. Obviously, this is why so I'm saying it, because you can look at the things that you're potentially going to eat, whether you like that flapjack or whether you like that pack of jelly babies or peanuts or whatever it is you're going to look at. You can start to have a look on the packets of what the carbohydrate content is and what the calorie content is. So energy gels, which you see lots of runners using, they're really easy. They're handy. They tell you exactly what nutrition's in them. I'm just, I just picked one up. There was an example of a brand I use called Talk. And that has 115 calories in it and 30 grams of carbs. So if you were going to fuel it on gels, it's quite an easy rule of thumb. You need two gels per hour, every hour. That gives me the um, 60 grams of carbohydrates and gives me 230 calories. So it's that that's a very simple rule of thumb um, to look at. So as you're practicing with your foods and you're thinking, what do I want? What do I think I could eat? If you start to look at these calories and carbohydrate content, all the packets should have it on. You can start to work out this, work out what the food that you're choosing is actually containing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I suppose the rule of thumb is to eat something every 30 minutes because. that makes up this hour's content of calories and carbohydrates. Um and I'll go back to what I said at the beginning of this bit. You can't take on enough calories. If you watch some of the top runners in these races, they will just keep shoveling gels and stuff in because they're burning so many calories. They know it. They will, But you, it takes years to train your gut to get there. So we're starting at the point of where you need to begin, which is what I'd say is something every 30 minutes to equal about the 60 to 70 grams and 200 to 250 calories. And a tip is, if you've got a Garmin or your phone, you can set it literally on a 30 minute set that it'll just beep. It's like a nutrition reminder and it literally will beep and you go, oh, I need to eat something, be it a gel, a flapjack or whatever it is that you're choosing to eat. But it's a little reminder when you're five, six hours into the event that you're going, oh, I don't really feel like eating. Oh, beep. Oh, yeah, I need to eat something. It's just a constant reminder that you need to take something on. Uh, okay. So that is basically covering that's covering the rule of thumb for nutrition on the eating side of things. And then, oh, a quick tip that I wanted to say to you is take some empty sandwich bags in your run pack, uh, because when you get to an aid station, you can put stuff in it. So you can put, I don't know, sweet stuff in one and you can put some peanuts and crisps and sandwiches in another. You don't have to stand at the aid station and eat the food. You can put it in your little bags and then walk off. Because if you're walking and eating, you're ticking off the miles. So moving is good. So you don't need to spend half an hour eating at an aid station, pick a few bits up, put them in the bag and off you go. That was just a the little other, that I yeah. wanted to add. I like to take a sandwich bag and then um, I might not eat it straight away, but then if I get to a hilly bit where I'm going to be walking anyway and getting a bit of a breather, then I'll have, my, some, I'll have some food then because it's much easier to eat when you're sort of walking up a bit of a hill. And then, um, yeah, once I get to a little bit of flat a bit where I think, oh, maybe I can jog this bit, I put my sandwich bag stuff it back in my bag and I have a bit later on when I'm walking again. So um, that's a handy, handy thing to do, really. And you can even make like a mixed picnic bag, grab a few different things and then you put your hand in, you never know what you're going to get. But, uh, but yeah, they're really handy for that, definitely. Um, so that ticks off the food side of things. And then the fluid. Fluid is, your hydration is basically, um, well, again, I'm going with a rule of thumb. 
So a lot of these running packs have the soft glass bottles in the front, or you might have a bladder in your back, um, in the back of your pack, depending. What I would say is those soft flasks are brilliant because you can see what you're drinking. The bladder, you never quite know what you're drinking. I know myself, I've been drinking a bladder, thought I've drank loads of it. You get home, you look in your pack and you go, oh God, I've barely drank anything. So, it, so at least the soft flasks that sit here, you know how much exactly you're drinking. Um, in terms of how much, I would say is a rule of thumb, 500 mil, one of those soft flask bottles is a 500 mil bottle. If you, to drink one of those per hour is, is what, as a general rule. Now, it depends on the weather. If it's super hot, you could be going up to a litre an hour, if, which is two of those bottles. Um, and again, in much colder temperatures, some of you may just see in the spine race that was going on where they're in freezing temperatures. You know, I've chatted to people who, who race that and they really aren't taking on that much fluid because you're not sweating. So basically, it's replenishing the fluids that you are sweating out. So hand in hand with that is your salt. When you sweat, as I'm sure you'll know, you sweat out salt as well. And we need to replace those salts um, in order for your body to be able to absorb the water that you're putting into it. And so what you might have what you might have heard of is electrolyte tablets. You can get them. They're just literally tabs. Um, they just you get them in a tube. SIS. Lots of brands do them, but they are just tabs that go into your water bottle. So at the aid station, you can fill your water bottles up, put another tab in, and this contains all your electrolytes and salts that you need, salts and minerals to top your top you back up. Going back to that very initial um, thing we said about finding that balance um, of all your nutrients, this is part of it. So if you can keep your salt levels topped up, your water will be absorbed into you. If you lose all your salt, so what you'll find is if your salt levels drop, you'll be weeing lots because your body literally can't. You can be drinking lots of water, but your body won't absorb those salts. So by keeping those electrolytes going through you, your body is finding that balance of topping up the salts and being able to absorb that water. So my tip is in the event, if you're suddenly finding yourself like I need to wee every half an hour. When you get to the next aid station, eat a lot of salty food. Find the crisps and what eat a lot of salt, because by by bringing those salt levels back up, you'll be able to do the water um, absorption again. Uh, so that is just a little bit of a hint and a rule of thumb with hydration. Uh, and, okay, and then Nia is going to do a little about, bit about trial and error. Um. Yeah, so trial and error. Um, I think you've just got to um, think about what what you think you're going to like or what you like eating at the moment and then just try things out on your longer runs um, or walks um, and just, you know, put some, some different options together. Um, ask your friends what they like to take with them. Um, we can give you some ideas of what we like to take with us. Um, and then it's, you know, just seeing what works for you, really. Um, I would say think about things that are easy to chew and swallow um, because sometimes when you're running, your mouth can get a bit dry. Um, and it's also, you know, quite a lot of effort to just so like to chew something chewy when you're running and trying to breathe at the same time. Um, so, um, so quick release things would be things like um, quick release cows, so jelly babies, um, um, Haribo, um, boiled sweets, gels, shop blocks. Um, what do you take, Zoe? Um, I I take, I'm a bit of a shop block, shop block, gels, yeah. Haribo. I'm definitely a Haribo fan. Um, and then I do like a mix up of sweet and savory. That's the other bit, isn't it? You do, en you do end up getting quite sick of sugary things. So you do then sort of look to what you can eat that's savory. Yeah. So raisins and nuts, I like salted peanuts and raisins or um, cranberries in a bag, just mixed up together in a sandwich bag. And that's sort of salty and sweet. So there's sort of fats in there. There's quite a lot of carbs because peanuts are high in carbs. And sometimes you can get the salted cashew nuts are quite good. Um, you introduced me to those Marmite cashew nuts, which are killer things. They're brilliant. They're a magic little food. Yeah, they're they're good. Good. Yeah, Yummy. Um, so yeah, a mix of raisins and sometimes people put like peanut M and M's in there in their mix and some sort of um, pretzels and stuff like that. Um, and then sort of more complex foods. Um, 
Um, you can take sandwiches. Um, I like sandwiches when I'm running a long thing um, because they 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 pack well. Um, you can put any sort of filling you like. So I quite like peanut butter and jam or just jam brechtan um, or um, marmite and hummus is quite good. Um, what do you have in your sandwiches, Zoe? Uh, I'm a bit of... Well, I'm quite happy with whatever's at the aid station. Generally, at the aid stations, you'll get sandwiches. So for me, it's a grab what's ever there. If there's a cheese, I'm a bit of a cheese and pickle grabber. Or I will grab a ham and cheese sandwich. I'm not too fussed. But yeah, if there's a sandwich. And another aid stations generally is where I'll grab real food. So at aid, And then in between is where I quite like to use the gels and the shop blocks and the bits and bobs. But at the aid stations is where I will grab the real food sort of. And then as I leave the aid station that's when I'll use and eat that and then use the gels in between more yeah and so a banana would be a complex carb they're always at aid stations they're you know a favorite at aid stations aren't they um if, bananas yeah and what I was going to say sometimes in all in these long events your stomach does start to feel a little bit icky uh it can happen you know they can have gut issues <clears throat> bananas are really good you know when you can't get anything in I will I think bananas are because of the potassium, I think it can calm your stomach a little. Mm. So that's quite a good one to try if your stomach isn't feeling 100%. Yeah, and then um, things like cake, um, Rocky Road is really good, flapjack, um, as long as it's not too, it's like not too hard <laughs> and difficult to chew, um, Cadbury's mini rolls, um, anything like that. Oh, cold pizza. I quite often take cold pizza oh, on the long run with me. That is a good shout. Cold pizza. Got cheese on it and it's sort of shout. carbs and it's got, um, it's got a bit of salt in it. Um, it's quite tasty when it's cold even. <laughs> so um, yeah, those are the sort of things I'd take with me. I think the, the words, phrase I'd use is a rolling picnic. You can literally take a few different things. You just take a few different things and it, it depends what you feel like at the time. And it's a guilt-free, it's a guilt-free time to take all your favorite snacks and you can just eat them all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and um the other thing is that um sometimes a hot chocolate or a cup of tea or coffee can go down well. Um or flat coke is really it's like a like an ultra runner's favorite thing, isn't it? I don't know why that is, but it just tastes really, really refreshing oh, okay. um when you've been um out for a while. Um yeah, and it, I think it's maybe because it's got the caffeine and it just gives you a little bit of a kick as well. Yeah, caffeine definitely works. But I think, again, it's something you've just got to make sure that your body can take because caffeine can play with your gut. So it is something just to try in a training session just to make sure that when your gut's already under stress, if you're going to put coke in it or something, that it can just handle that caffeine. Personally, I think it's absolutely magic. And by the back end of an ultra, I'm drinking Coke like it's water. <laughs> yeah. Give me the Coke. You have to be a little bit careful with gels because some gels have a lot of caffeine in. Yeah. And if you were trying to have lots of gels, you could quite easily overdo the caffeine. Hmm. Um, I think that's just the one important point. Yeah. Um... So I think that is sort of that's a whistle stop of us just sort of giving you an overview of how to approach it. The key bit is you need to start practicing now. You need to start thinking about what you're going the sort of not, not exactly but the sorts of things you're going to eat. You don't want to suddenly get to the day and have not been practicing any eating during your running and then expect your body to suddenly be able to take all this food in and, and stress your gut out. So you need to practice it now so that it it's just another run to your body is what we're saying. Yeah, and eat eat throughout the um day. Um, you know, eat before you get hungry on the day. So even during your first hour, have you know a couple of snacks. Yeah. Um, and you know, continue like that throughout the day. Keep thinking of it like that car fuel tank. From the off, you need to start refilling that fuel tank. Don't let your fuel tank dip to half full before you start refilling it. You're literally just trying to top it up constantly. So as Nia just said, from the get-go in that first half hour, you won't be hungry, but you need to start snacking. You don't want to leave it till two hours into the event and because otherwise that's where you'll end up. You'll have heard people use the phrase bonking or hit the wall, and that literally just means that they've run out of carbohydrate. 
you see it on the marathon on the TV and stuff, and they're running, and then they just run out of energy. They literally have just run out of carbohydrate. The body has nothing left to burn, so it just hits the wall, and that's what hitting the wall or bonking is, and you don't want to do that. Uh, okay, so we will hand it over to you guys more, and we will have a look through these questions, um, and between us, we will try and answer them for you. Okay. Right. So do you want to do the water one from Jilly? Um, let's Kate. Oh god, that's more than my screen. Would okay, so we've got would you add electrolytes to all fluid or if not if not one five hundred ml bottle of water and one electrolyte? <laughs> Good question. Um it is a bit individual that because everyone has, everyone will sweat at different rates and when and, con and salt concentration in your sweat will be at different levels. So it is, again, you can only really refer to yourself. I am not a very heavy sweater, but my sweat is very salt concentrated. So I do tend to take a lot of electrolytes when I'm running because I know that what's coming out of me is heavily, is heavily salted. What I would say is if you've got, if my answer is yes, in simple terms, yes, it, put electrolytes in both your bottles is, is sort of my general answer. But my butt is your stomach might, you might get to the point where you just don't want to drink electric. You know, you might be like, oh God, I just don't want to. And that's when I would say, yes, alternate them water and electrolytes because the water is just plain, easy to drink, but you do want to keep topping up those electrolytes. So yes, fundamentally, both of them have electrolytes in. But if you just find it a bit sickly or you don't want it, then one water, one electrolytes, and just keep swapping between them. That's what I would say. What's next? Okay. Um, so Karen's asking, do you know what will be available at the aid stations? Well, we haven't Other heard. That, I know there's a massive variety. In yeah. all sort of their events, there is there's a huge variety, isn't there? Yeah, there will be bananas, jelly babies, um, Harry Bow, crisps, salted peanuts, um, flapjacks, some cakes, biscuits. There will be some sandwiches. Um, I know sort of you had said it will cater for vegans, vegetarians. So that's that's being covered as well. That's definitely being covered. I'm just seeing the next one down that says I have an allergen. How do I get food to each aid station? If you have a specific allergen, I would just email the race and either liaise with Hugh in getting a little package delivered to eat. He'll be able to arrange that or he'll say, well, say if you're celiac or something, he'll go, we have stuff catered for that. So I would just drop the event an email with your personal allergen and then they'll help you arrange how to deal with that. Okay, now Karen's asking, what would you recommend to eat on and drink in the morning before the race? Uh, Nia, what do you have for breakfast? I, well, I don't have a set go-to. It depends on what time the race is a little bit. Um, so if the race is not mega early, I'll have maybe um, porridge and banana um, and some honey and maybe and a coffee. Um if the race is really, really early, I might just have some cereal, like um, shreddies, because it's a little bit sort of lighter on the tummy. Um, and in an ideal world, how far out are you having that before the race start, before the event start? Oh, um, I like to eat a couple of hours before the event start of the race. And then I might have sort of like a banana about 40 minutes beforehand and a handful of jelly babies, maybe half an hour to go. Um, but I don't have a set regime. Um, but I think just stick to what you know uh, and what you like, really. Think about what, what you eat before you go out on a long run at the weekend, um, you know, and then stick to, to simple food that you know well. Yeah. Like and I think, again, practice that. So like we're saying, practice the nutrition that you're going to be taking out on the event. Practice the nutrition that you're going to be have for your breakfast. Uh, my breakfast, for example, is pretty standard before every race. It is some berries, a banana, Greek yogurt with granola on that. And I can take it anywhere. I don't have to cook it or anything. That is my standard pre-race breakfast with a glass of orange juice is normally what I have. About the similar an hour and a half to two hours before the before the start so that your body has, you know, started to digest that food. Um, but I think, yeah, so 
it's practice again that trial and error practice a few things before in training before you do it on race day don't do anything yeah. different oh and we haven't <laughs> i don't know if i should say this we haven't talked about um um toilet stops on, on this but coffee i think if you're a coffee drinker having coffee in the morning um helps you get to the loo before you go for the run <laughs> Good shout. Yes, good point. <laughs> In my experience. Um, but yeah, <laughs> everybody's different. Uh, yeah, no, I personally don't drink coffee, but I know a lot of runners that first thing they need them because generally the races are quite early, aren't they, when you do these things? Mm. And it might not be your normal routine of, of toilet habits. So actually get up and have a coffee. If you've got to, you know, if you've got to be out of the house at half five in the morning, sometimes that coffee in the morning can definitely help move things move things along should we say yeah um what okay. how much protein should you be taking on after exercises uh Jilly's question is there a rule of thumb for that how much protein uh, is there a rule of thumb um i think it's just it's having something sensible you know that you what like i said you can either be you can either use protein shakes which is a measured amount of protein and then some have carbohydrates in there too um or you can look at if you're going down real food then you just need to have a look at something so if you're having it before your lunch then you might have a chicken breast and rice or if i was having it before on breakfast, toast. eggs on toast uh, beans on toast or oh, i like um yogurt and, and um banana yeah yeah, yeah Greek yogurt is really good for protein. That that's another great one for protein. Um, but it's just again, it's that twenty to thirty minutes that you want to get something in in that window. Um, have we got any more questions in the chat? Is there that. anything? Is there anything else anyone wants to ask? Uh, okay. If there is anything and you potentially didn't want to put it on here, but you have got any questions, then by all means get in touch. If you're on that WhatsApp group, you can contact either me or Nia through WhatsApp. We're on there or email Hugh and he will pass it on to us if he can't answer it. Um, and I think, yeah, you know, and I'm sure questions will crop up. You know, once you go away and start practicing these and actually trying things, you might be like, well, that doesn't work. Or how do I do this? Or so just by all means, ask questions. Uh, I will be there on the 17th of Feb for the recce. So if you're there, please fire anything across to me for that. Um, and oh, then, sorry. yeah. Sorry, if, I, if I may just jump in, I yeah. have put together a little sort of fueling guide for, for the ladies coming along. So I could share that. I'm happy, I'm happy to send it through. It just, again, has got very, you know, basic stuff that you talked about. So I'm happy. Perfect. Um, you know to get that emailed out and i'm going to be there on the recce as well um with you so if anyone's got any questions on the day i'll be happy i'll be uh, happy susanna answer. is a nutritionist so if you have any questions you specific you can find them at her because she will definitely have the answer for you hopefully <laughs> of course you will uh yeah perfect thank you very much susanna no problem we are potentially going to do another webinar as well on um kit me and Nia, uh, Nia and I both think that that's really important but there's quite a lot of just again tips hints uh things that people probably won't have thought of because you've never had to be out on your feet for this length of time what to carry how to carry it etc so we are going to organize another webinar on that we just need to get a date sorted but you will be emailed out with that as well um this webinar has been recorded so if there's anyone you know that hasn't been able to be on it this evening but wants to catch up they'll be able to see that on youtube i'm sure hugh again will put a link out to that so they can catch up on that at a later date uh, and otherwise hopefully see lots of you on the 17th for us to recce some of the miles along the course but um near have you got anything to add no, no, I think that's it. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to um, yet yeah, looking forward to the day. I'm really excited actually. Um, it's going to be amazing. Brilliant. All right. Well, thank you everyone for jumping on. I hope you all have a lovely evening, and uh, hopefully see you on the seventeenth. All right. Bye, bye guys. <laughs>